Hi, this is Bobby Diol, and you're watching me on Spill the Tea with Sneha. Lord Bobby, <laughs> since the internet has christened you that, yeah. I'm going to take the liberty of calling you that. That's fine. Welcome to Film Companion. Thank you so much for Welcome to me. my show. It's called Spill the Tea, which means that... Chai ki rani hai. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're at Sunny Super Sound. Give me some context. What does this place really mean to you? Is home nearby? There's the beach. Just it is. It is uh, something my dad created many, many years ago, and uh, he was always, uh, you know, wanted to do something for the industry by creating a studio for recording and all that. So it has a special feel to to me. I mean, it's special to me, and also the location is amazing. It's right near the beach. Yeah. which I hardly go to because it's so crowded. And the weather is nice because there's always a nice breeze blowing out here. And there's always construction happening nowadays, so what do you do? I, I guess there's no point trying to talk yeah, over the construction. So I found a screening theatre here that I'm going to take you okay. to your own screening theatre and we'll chat there. Okay, okay? cool. Come on. Essentially, you guys have your own screening theatre. I mean, it's for everybody from the industry. Yeah. So but in my head, when the duels are having a movie night, uh, you all come here and sit, or am I just imagining shit? <laughs> uh, well, uh, we very rarely do that. But yeah, sometimes when you want to watch certain movies, we do tend to uh, you know, come, come and watch it out here. Yeah? Yeah. It's the got great sound. It's got everything. It's got the most amazing sound system. And uh, it's all thanks to my brother because he has this knack, he has this knowledge about all these things. Do you have any memories associated with the place? Any films of yours that were had their first screenings here? So my first film songs were recorded here and Nadeem Shavan had done the music. And then uh, I remember when I started my career, I had to dub for my film. So we converted the machine in such a way that we could dub and practice dubbing. So I did that over here for the first time. So yeah, it has a lot of memories. <laughs> Interesting. So now we're going to walk and we've set up over there. But because I have you with me, I was like, why just make it a walk? How about you direct me and teach me the soldier wala swag wala walk? Because I feel very filmy that well, I'm I in a show film theatre. I can show you my ashram walk. The, the ashram. new 2.0 ashram yeah, wala Baba walk. Nirara walk. Ready? <laughs> What's, what are we directing? Just be How? very relaxed and keep your hands behind. And just very relaxed. Come here, and there's the public out there. Then you go. Jump now. Do it. Jump now. <laughs> it's not an easy job. It's not an easy job. Please, please grab a seat. Since we're in a screening theatre, how are you on like release day? Like, are you chilled out or are you running to the bathroom with loose motion? Wala? Which, which kind of actor are you? I, I, I get uh, sleepless nights. Definitely. I think every actor goes through it, you know. I, I, they, you can't deny it because it's, it's such a special moment for you because every weekend speaks for you what's going to happen in next weekend or whatever and what, how you'll be situated, you're positioned in the industry. But I think uh, you get used to it sometimes and uh, I usually avoid being in the city. Oh. <laughs> I used to do that. Did you at all expect the kind of blowout that an ashram had. I mean, I could very well be talking to India's most streamed movie star. <laughs> Facts, right? It's yeah, in the numbers. I mean, touch wood, God has been really kind. I think, uh, you know, I was looking for opportunities and I was trying consciously and to find different kinds of characters to play, you know, because I was stuck with my image, which I really didn't want to be a, the same Bobby Diol, which was always there. And in, in a way, I had lost a few years and I had lost being able to use that image. Because after a point, you cannot play those characters. And then what happens is because people don't have that belief or faith in you because they've never seen you doing something besides being, you know, the typically casted hero of a film. It's never easy to get characters which are so away from your personality. And I think OTT platform was a blessing in disguise mm -hmm. because uh, I started with Class of 83, which was completely character driven. 
and people appreciated my work in that. And then Ashram released just one week after that and it became a phenomenon. I mean, it was like, I never expected Ashram to reach this level. I mean, 1.6 billion viewership and the fan following it has. I mean, it, it follows you everywhere you go. I mean, anywhere, any part of India, even when I went to America, the doctors I met, uh, the families, they wouldn't stop talking about Ashram. You know, so I was like, I mean, you Has know. Has this happened to you before? Like Earlier when I used to do those soldiers and gups and things like that, it was a different, you know, after many years I've seen that kind of, uh, the, the, the fan craze, you know, and uh, I still remember the first time when Prakash Ji called, I got a call that Prakash Ji wants to meet you for a project. So when I was hearing the idea, I thought, okay, there's a cop's role, which Darshan played. I thought, this is what I'm going to be offered. Yeah. You know? And then in the end he says, I want you to pay, play Baba Nirala. And for a second I was like, excuse me, am I, am I really hearing you right? Did th is that what you just said to me? And I was like, wow, here is the conscious effort. Deliberately I'm trying to do different stuff. And Prakash ji has handed it to me in my hands, you know. Did you ask him why? Like what was his thought process? I mean, yes, I did ask him. I said, Prakash ji, but why me for this role? He says, uh, because the, your, your personality, the kind of person you are, the image you have, you know, the kind of movies you've done, you've always played this good person, you know, and no one will expect you to play this character. And I need him to look like that, the character. And it was amazing that I was his first choice, you know, and that gave me the confidence that though I have never been accepted as an actor as such. I mean, people like my work. I, I mean, I wasn't like pathetic at, at my work, but no one gave me the opportunity to play characters which was so difficult and a story which is so character driven, you know. And if my character was not up to mark, it would not work. You said yes immediately? Yeah, immediately. And Prakashi was telling me, I was thinking that you will say yes or not. But I was so happy when you said yes. You know, and uh, that was then and this is now. You know. But from all the films you've done, has what has Ashram taught you about what the masses really want? Because there is something here that has clicked and how. Have you got a sense? Have you put your finger on it? I mean, I still remember lockdown was on and uh, my security guys, we told them to start staying in the house. We didn't let them go back to their mm -hmm. quarters, you know, wherever they stayed. So I used to walk around in the evenings and Ashram just released and I was walking and they suddenly looking at me. Like, you know, like, they had this expression in this, their eyes. And then slowly they got the courage, courage and said, Sir, you saw your ashram, it was a lot of fun. Is that the ultimate in all my life, In all my life, I have never seen a reaction to any of my movies. Obviously now too, there's mobile phones and all that, so everybody's at it. But it was so nice, you know, so reassuring. I think that it's the ultimate compliment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it kabhi kabhi lagta hai ki apunich bhagwan hai. <laughs> <laughs> I take that as a yes. <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, my character does. But <laughs> in real life, I don't think but so. But the fame can be quite heady. You know, like when I reached here, I knew I had reached because there was that whole jund of paps outside. Are you enjoying this? Uh, see, see, it's all these... These things are all short-lived. I don't let them get to me. I have seen... But you're enjoying it, no? I am, I am thankful to God that I am, this is happening and I am grateful and, I, and it just makes me want to work harder. And I, you know, I don't want to become or take it for granted. I just want to respect what I'm getting right now so that it makes me keep working harder. You know, and I think that's more important. I shy off from all this, you know, from me doing all this, like for me being on Instagram and doing interviews and all that, you know, it's important, but I shy off them because half the time I really don't know what to say or not to say. I always end up being honest about what I am. Which is good. Yeah, I know, so, which is fine, I mean, so that's how it is. <laughs> you know, a big reason you said why you wanted to really get back into the groove and the grind is that your kids looked at you and they asked you why you weren't going to work. How, how are they doing now? Like, are you <laughs> back to being the cool cat? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you set an example for your kids, you know, and uh, 
when you're going through a bad time, you forget all those uh, responsibilities and uh, you're immature because you don't understand that because, you know, for me to grow up from being the youngest in the family and mm -hmm. becoming a parent and then all that, it makes you realize a lot of things. And my sons, my wife, I think my wife has been my strongest pillar who supported me through everything, you know, and uh, I give complete credit to her. And then now everybody's happy. I mean, I see happiness in everybody's eyes. My father, my mother, my sisters, my cousins, my staff, everyone is so happy seeing me happy, you know, so it's just amazing. Yeah, but the OG cool cat in your house, of course, is your father who goes back on a film set. Yes. Rocky or Rani ki prem kahani. Tell us what, what's he been saying? What's it like for him? You know, the other day he was telling me, you know, beta man, I thought that maybe I'll work for 70 years to work. शायद उसके बाद काम नहीं मिले या काम नहीं कर पाऊंगा और आज मैं 86 का हो गया हूं और मैं फिर भी काम कर रहा हूं इनसेन यू नो सो इट वाज द मोस्ट ऑसम थिंग फीलिंग आई मीन आई गॉट व्हेन ही सेड दैट टू मी एंड आई थिंक दैट्स एग्जैक्टली व्हाट इंस्पायर्स मी दैट आई वांट टू वर्क टिल द लास्ट ब्रेथ आई टेक यू नो बिकॉज़ इट्स जस्ट व्हाट वी आर वी एक्टर्स एंड आई जस्ट वांट टू कीप वर्किंग एंड you know, he was there in my family, the biggest inspiration, and I didn't even see him when I had given up in life. You know, now I see all that around me, my brother, my dad, my wife, she's a working woman, my sisters, they're all working, you know, and it's just nice to see and realize, okay, see, everybody goes through good and bad, and they're still not giving up. Yeah. You know, we had the the long haired uh, soldier wala bobby that i grew up with and then you have the grey haired love hostel wala bobby that we're all loving right now what's a piece of advice this guy would give that guy i learned never to pity yourself you know when you pity yourself then this whole world becomes a cruel world nobody loves you no one cares about you no one wants to help you that's yeah, stupid you know everybody's living their life everybody has issues why are they going to all get together and help you, <laughs> right? <laughs> or hate on you for that matter. Yeah. They're just doing their yeah, own thing. Yeah, they're just doing the stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, I feel like the the internet will cancel me if I meet you and not ask you about Lord Bobby and his meme supremacy. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you spend some time secretly uh, stalking this, uh, I, these accounts? I really... Or are I, you not secretive about it? No, I'm, 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 I'm a little shy. I don't really venture into checking out what has been spoken or memes being made about me. But my friends tell me before I can even check them. You know, so I know what's happening, you know. And it's really sweet. People give me that importance and, uh, you know, there's so much love there for me, you know, for like how people in their own humorous way give me that importance, you know. And I think it's really sweet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen backlash, I've, be, I've been trolled. Everything's happened with me, but I knew that I cannot give in to all those, you know. And eventually those tables have turned now. You know, people once upon a time made a lot of fun about me being a DJ and things like that and I was never a DJ but it you just... You want to set the record? Like where did that even... Yeah, it happened when I went to a nightclub opening and they made me go behind the DJ console or whatever. Yeah. I put the headphones and behave as if I was playing my music and obviously if it was Bobby Diol, he'd be playing Nayo Nayo or Soldier Soldier only. Now why would he play some other actor's music? But I wasn't playing it, the DJ was playing it. It became really trolled and... But now it's... They, they, you know, they, I, I, it doesn't affect me because... Can I just say I'm heartbroken that you're not a DJ because in my head you'd make a really cool DJ? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I wish I could DJ because I love music but whenever you go out, the DJs are never playing the kind of music you want to hear. What do you want to hear? I like mellow, I like great lyrics. I like lyrics with great tune, great melody to it. So when you go out, you're clearly not going out to go dancing. Well, I used to go a lot when I was younger. I used to only be dancing. I used to walk out of the nightclub fully drenched. <laughs> In your own sweat? In my own sweat. When I was younger. I used to just love partying. I mean, dancing. But now I don't understand the concept of going to a dark place with loud music, f flashing lights. I just can't do that anymore. <laughs> Finally, you want to just tell us what you're enjoying most about being Bobby today? 
I've discovered so much about myself as an actor, I feel. And uh, I'm so glad that I went through the phase I did for me to understand myself even more and become more fearless and put myself in uncomfortable situations as an actor out of my comfort zone. So it pushes me to perform better with whatever capacity I have as an actor, you know. And I think that's what I'm enjoying. Yes, I will make mistakes. Yes, there will be a f project which might not work for me, which I know it won't, but I'm not going to give up because it happens to every actor. You can't always keep giving characters or doing characters which people are just going to, you know, love. Luckily for me, it has in the last three projects. We are Bhagwan, no? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it is, you know. Thank you so much for chatting with me. It was really good fun chatting with you.